Meanwhile, we have breaking news this morning. The State Department telling families of U.S. diplomats and some embassy staff in Ukraine to leave the country today. Officials are warning an attack from Russia could happen at any time. This comes as President Biden is considering sending thousands of troops to Eastern Europe and the Baltic states. He's talking about 5,000 troops going to Eastern Europe. The U.K. just announced it has no plan to send combat troops to Ukraine, and NATO announced it will send fighter jets and ships. There is questions now around Germany because of its reliance on Russian gas on whether it will even get involved. Joining me right now is former senior advisor to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mary Kissel is here. Mary, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Give us your assessment of Thanks what's taking me. place on the Ukraine border. Well, I think Putin is exposing several disturbing things. First of all, he's shown just how much U.S. deterrence has eroded because, frankly, Maria, we shouldn't be in this situation in the first place if he had maintained the strong posture that the Trump administration had adopted. Secondly, he's showing the disunity within Europe. You noted Germany. Germany is behaving actually very rationally. Um, they like enjoying the U.S. security umbrella on the one hand and the cheap Russian gas on the other. And thirdly, he's also showing the arguments within NATO. Um, there have been discussions about which countries can and cannot ship weapons to Ukraine. And you put those three things together and you find yourself in a very, very dangerous situation. Well, I guess what I'm trying to get at is how much this has to do with policy. I mean, bad policy, the Biden administration started off killing the XL pipeline, making the U.S. dependent on foreign sources of energy. Tom Cotton joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures and said that Biden mismanaged the Ukraine-Russia crisis from the very beginning. Watch the senator from Arkansas. Listen to this. I think President Biden bears a lot of the blame. For a year, he's been appeasing Vladimir Putin. Uh, he gave him a very one-sided nuclear arms control treaty the very first month of his presidency. He removed sanctions from the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline from Russia to Germany, which his own party opposed. He really did nothing about the colonial pipeline hack. And then, of course, in August, Vladimir Putin, like the rest of the world, saw Joe Biden's debacle in Afghanistan. So that's why Vladimir Putin thinks the timing is right here. Mary, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think the senator is correct. Um, presidents have choices, and this president did uh, give Vladimir Putin a lot, which is ironic because he, he ran on a platform, um, of course, of being tougher on Russia. And look, um, Putin is someone who has made his career on the basis of deception and violence and corruption, and he's shown over many years that he will take advantage of weakness. And the senator named a series of events, um, rushing back into the New START treaty, um, letting the Nord Stream 2 pipeline continue without real pain for Europe. Um, and Putin is somebody who, uh, you know, he's going to expand his power in ways that he thinks that he can when he can. And I think you know, what surprises yeah. me, Maria, is that no one is talking about the second and the third order uh, potential effects here. Um, you know, you've heard a lot of people say, well, why should we care about Ukraine? Well, remember what happened in Syria uh, when President Obama mismanaged that crisis? You had millions of refugees flooding into Europe. You had states that were overwhelmed. You had terrorists flooding across the continent. Um, you know, war or incursions are very, very unpredictable events. And like it or yeah. not, if the United States doesn't lead, if we defer to our allies, we try to make decisions by consensus, then you find yourself in the situation that uh, unfortunately we're in right now. Well, you also have bad policy decisions enriching and empowering our adversaries. Look at China thinking it's the right time to fly planes around Taiwan. Look at what's happening with Iran. The United Arab Emirates reporting this morning that it intercepted another two ballistic missiles earlier this morning targeting its capital, Abu Dhabi. According to the defense ministry, the missiles were fired by the Houthi terrorist group, which is backed by Iran. It comes a week after Houthi rebels conducted a drone attack near Abu Dhabi's airport that killed at least three people and sparked multiple explosions, Mary. You pointed this out. This is a big story, the fact that Iran-backed Houthis are now attacking Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I, I'm surprised that this story isn't getting more attention because 
you know, there's a real danger here that you could see Americans killed in the Middle East. Um, we've had attacks on uh, our embassy in Iraq, on uh, a military outpost that we have in Syria. Um, we have uh, thousands of Americans in Saudi Arabia. And what you've just highlighted, Maria, is that this comes as a result of Iran-backed help. Uh, the Houthi rebels wouldn't be able to shoot ballistic missiles into the UAE without Iranian help. And so uh, why is this happening? Well, it's because we've engaged in multiple rounds of talks to try to revive uh, the Iran nuclear deal, which, by the way, the Iranians were breaking uh, while the Obama administration was negotiating it and after they had signed it. Um, so if you're thinking about, you know, geopolitical risk, you have to think more broadly than what is happening on the Ukraine border or the exercises in Belarus. Uh, you know, you have to look at the Middle East and the Straits and that very important region because we're not backing uh, our partners there who share our strategic goals, like Saudi Arabia. We're appeasing the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, Iran. And remember, too, yeah. that Iran is not just acting over there in the Middle East. Um, they have hooks into places like Venezuela, Central America. They tried an assassination in Washington, D.C. not so long ago. They tried to abduct a journalist here in Bro uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, so you know, these things may seem like they're far away, um, but in actuality, yeah. they're not. They touch our shores, and you've reported on that, too, with communist China and the operations that they're conducting here in the United States, too. So what what are you saying then to clients? You are obviously the policy advisor at Stevens Incorporated, senior policy advisor. Uh, what are you telling clients as far as what we need to know about this? China flew an additional 39 warplanes near Taiwan yesterday, the largest showing of force by the CCP in several months. Well, I, I think that, unfortunately, uh, if you don't see a significant change in policy, in other words, if, if you don't see the administration significantly course correct, um, then you could see the potential for cascading events here because these bad guys all talk to each other and they watch what we do and how we behave. And when you have the largest power in Europe, as in Germany, uh, resisting yeah. pressure on Russia. And the only people, by the way, who are really helping us and standing up are the Brits, and that's because of Brexit. Uh, we should give a cheer here for Brexit because the Brits are the only ones that are really, you know, sending in uh, advisors and supplies and putting Russia on the back foot right. with the release of that intelligence information. That was fantastic. They wouldn't have done that if they were still in the European Union. But, you know, we need more than that. Uh, and for that, you need U.S. leadership. And so I think the risk return yeah. profile for investors, you know, has to be rethought here. I'm not saying pull out from the from the whole world, but you have to be realistic right. here about what these policies are going to produce. And that, I unfortunately, yeah. I think, is a lot more volatility and a lot more risk in places uh, that I think uh, many investors won't be won't be thinking about, but should be thinking about, like the Gulf, for instance. All right. We will leave it there. It's a great point you made on the U.K., giving us that intel that uh, the Russians are trying to change the government there in Ukraine. Mary, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for all of your insights on Thanks this. Mary me. Kissel joining us this morning.